we are the power generating wood mitigation device team. I'm Marcos, I'm Joel, and Junior with me. Our advisor, Dr. Tremonte, and Javier Valencia. Well, here's our problem statement. Uh, first of all, there is a need for innovative engineering solutions to mitigate the damage and destruction uh, caused by hurricanes. Also, uh, first hurricane power outages are a major concern. And uh, there is a need for clean energy generation uh, using renewable resources. Uh, now, I want to direct your attention to these pictures here. As you can see, house damage usually start by uh, roof failure. Now, why is that? Uh, you can see in this top right picture, these arrows represent the wind striking the house at a 90 degree. And you can see how these vortices are formed on the roof. The same thing here when the wind striking the house at an angle, how these conical vortices are formed. Now, in that picture on the bottom left, uh, this, area, this, this blue area, especially the one on top of the roof, that means very negative pressure or vacuum. Now, this is formed because of the flow separation within the boundary layer. And that happens when very high speed winds flow over such a surface. <clears throat> now, with that in mind, uh, we present the objectives uh, for this project. We wanted to design a device that, first of all, modifies the boundary layer, it reduces the pressure difference of our roof, and it extracts power uh, from the wind to generate electricity. Now, before we go into any details, I want to show the timeline. And this is how we split uh, the work throughout this project. We can come back to it again if you want, of course. Uh, we would like to start talking a little bit about the global impact of this project. Uh, from the environmental point of view, we are generating green energy, which is always uh, helpful to the planet. From the global, global point of view, this device can be implemented in many, many different countries around the world. And from the economic point of view, we are reducing the cost of electricity by generating uh, electricity from a renewable and free source, which is the wind. And of course, but the most important is that this uh, has the potential to save a life. <coughs> also, uh, there is a program that received our special attention because of its importance. Uh, to a clean planet, and that is the LEED. The Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design is a nonprofit organization that focuses on environmental consciousness. And just to give you an idea how important this is, nowadays all government buildings are striking, are pursuing to be LEED certified. And I want to show you this because our project qualified for two credits. First is on-site uh, renewable energy, and second, innovation in design. And since we're talking innovation in design, we wanted to um, emphasize that our project is a completely new approach to wind mitigation. There have been in the past some uh, passive mitigation devices, as you can see here in these two pictures on the top. However, this is a completely new approach of a dynamic device that would not only mitigate the wind, but also extract and harvest that energy from the wind to uh, generate clean energy. Uh, now we will explain a little more about our project. Thank you, Marcus. So what you see in these pictures is the flow chart that we follow in order to accomplish the design study of, that we did for our senior design project. Um, before going into any detail, uh, let's take a look at the sensitivity study that we did in order to uh, eliminate some of the desired, uh, design variables that we had at the, be uh, at the beginning of this um, senior design project. Uh, we did all the, our analysis using ANSYS Fluid, which is a uh, widely used CFD analysis software. <coughs> it's the most effective and accurate uh, fluid mechanics software that was available to us. Uh, this is the geometry that we create. As you can see, it's divided into three zones. The first zone is the outside flow. The, in, the um, inlet is on the uh, on the right, on the, on the left, and the, the, out, the outlet on the right. So this, the, the, in zone one is pretty much laminar the flow. Then zone two is the area of interest. In, is the flow around the house, and we have a zone tree, which is a rotating zone to simulate the uh, fluid in a rotating turbine. Uh, now, the fr the, we divided this sensitivity study into three parts. The first part was uh, doing a mesh study. The, the mesh study, we can see that's the mesh on the, on the left, this the pressure profile, the static pressure profile on the right, and even though we, we cannot see it from those, uh, for that figure, all those values are in Pascal. Um, and then we have, uh, this is the final mesh, that's the progression on the final mesh. And we learned three important things, uh, things from our, our mesh study. One, the, the mesh around the turbine, need, uh, the element size needs to be as thick, at least as thick as the blade of the turbine. Second, the triangular method is by far more accurate and give better results than a square method uh, in, while simulating turbulent flow. And finally, uh, that we needed to use one-tenth of the thickness of the boundary layer for the mesh size 
in the, at, five, at least at five millimeters from the edge of the roof. And that's the detail. Now, uh, for the next two parts, Junior is going to explain. Thank you, Joel. Uh, the next scientific story that we performed was uh, to find the best number of plates of a uh, straight uh, turbine. It's important to mention that we got a design constraint, which is a cross-sectional area of the wind tunnel. And from there, we use 12%. So we scale everything to 12% to use that cross-sectional area for further testing. As you can see, there is a relationship there. That means the length of the turbine, a relationship between the length and the tip to tip distance. And what we did, we tried to predict which of three, five, or seven plates would be the best, the best configuration for our turbine. Um, and this graph here shows uh, our, uh, the pressure profile on the roof of the house. And um, from this, we conclude that the three square blade, case one, which is length equals to tip to tip distance, will be uh, selected and further anal analyzed uh, for the study. Uh, then finally, the, the other part of the sensitive study was to find the position of the turbine towards the house. We started by uh, uh, making y axis zero and then we calculate uh, along the roof of the house which would be the best position. As you can see here, the pressure profile again shows that by just putting a turbine, any device in front, we're mitigating the wind. However, we conclude from this study that 0 0.015 meters will be the best position for our intent, which is mitigate the wind. With that being said, we want to have calculated y value to see how it's going to be placed uh, within the, the house. And we got uh, zero a meter per second, zero, I'm sorry, zero meter uh, towards the house. That means that it's going to be at the same level of the house, as the graph shows. Next step, once this was completed as a security study, was to uh, do experimental tests. And I want to walk you through this really quick. We use a 3D technology printer. All the prototypes are there. And then you can see the cross-sectional area that we use. This is the wind tunnel on the transfer phenomenal lab. You see the house. You see the turbine. The air is coming left to right. And then you see the house. We designed the house in a way that we place holes in the middle of the house, making it symmetric because we're interested in the center. And you can see the air hoses to measure pressure distribution along the house. We use a caliber to properly place and uh, measure the distance that we set up an is the same here. That acquisition unit where we get the reading values, we use a digital tachometer to get rotational speed from the turbine, and we calculate all the wind speed through a pretty tube from the wind tunnel. Now I want to share with you really quick a short video of our, uh, one of our experimental tests. You can see our turbine is rotating. You can see some weird is there. Movie star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, Joel will go into detail about uh, some results obtained from the experimental part and analysis. Thank you, Junior. Uh, what you see here is an ancient transient video for static pressure and now for velocity with the similar study or similar simulations of what we did. The difference is I'm showing a transient video because it's easier for you to understand the type of analysis. We use steady state in order to get a more accurate, uh, accurate result. Uh, these are the graph that we create to correlate the results between the, the pressure measure on the lab and then the simulations. And uh, as the red line, it, those are the points of the steady pressure that we measure with our experiment. The blue is the simulation. Both results are in Pascal, as it says, and, and that's the length of the graph is precisely the length of the roof of the house that we use. Uh, during the experiment, we measure uh, angular speed and we measure uh, the, the rest, try, try, we try to measure the rugosity, the, the so, roughness, surface so roughness, in order to input all those values into ANSYS and get an accurate result. And you, what you can see here is that both simulation and, and, and experiment follow the same profile, so we can predict what's going to happen using ANSYS for further studies. Uh, now, this is the three straight blades to bind. Those are the results. As expected, we got a counterclockwise rotation, and that counterclockwise rotation generates a smaller pressure all around the roof. That smaller pressure is the opposite of the result that we want to obtain. So what we did is try with another uh, configuration, which is a three straight blade twisted to bind. What we noted from that is, as expected, Counterclockwise rotation and the smaller pressure on the roof, but we also noticed that 
putting an e uh, uh, tw angular twist on the turbine increases the angular speed. So we kept that uh, rotation in order to obtain more power from the turbines. And then we try, since we needed a clockwise rotation, we tried with a configuration of a, a typical Savonius type turbine to blaze. And what we noticed is we got the results that we were expecting, a clockwise rotation, but the turbine required a higher fluid velocity in order to begin the movement. The, the fluids are compensated over the top and it works almost like an air airfoil. So we tried then with three blades and four blades. Those are the two graphs that you're uh, looking in here. And to explain to more detail the analysis that we did from this uh, correlation of the results, Marcus is going to take over. Thank you, Ed. Um, if you go back real quick, uh, as you might have noticed, there is a little bit of a gap uh, between the experimental curve and the um, simulation curve. And of course, there are many reasons uh, for that, but we believe that the main reason is because all the simulations are performed in a two uh, dimensional configuration, which is, of course, a little bit different from the experiment. However, we want to uh, point out that the profiles are very, very similar, and this is far more significant for us uh, for the purpose of this project. So when we put all together, this is what we obtain. These are all the lines from the experiment. As you can see, that curve that goes all the way down is the house by itself. You can see that whole, all devices are mitigating the wind, and they are smoothing out that pressure uh, distribution along the roof. If you look at this uh, chart that we have here, the, the, the number of circles at the bottom is the pressure difference between the highest and lowest point of the house by itself. And the other one right on top, the 27, is uh, for the three uh, blades of bonus. And why do we point that one out? Because that would be uh, the, ch the, the model that we chose uh, after uh, this project, among all those that we analyzed, which you, see, which you can see over there. And uh, why did we choose this model? Well, first of all, the, it provides an 83% uh, improvement in the pressure difference over a roof, uh, which is very significant. Uh, it has a very high uh, angular velocity, which is very uh, good for power generation, which is another uh, objective. <laughs> And uh, it's very cost effective when compared to the four blades of onions. Now, why do I say four blades? Because this four blades, it performed a little bit better when it comes to wind mitigation. However, its rotational speed is significantly slower than the three blade. And that it's more, a lot of power that we are not uh, taking advantage of. So for that reason, after everything uh, together, we chose the three uh, blades of onions as our proposed design. Now, up to this point, everything we did was a small scale uh, models that you can see right there. So using all those results, we wanted to do a rough estimation of, uh, of, of what can happen with the real size uh, prototype in terms of power generation. And we perform a dimensional analysis for that, the Jimmy will not explain. Thank you, Marcus. As we mentioned before, um, we perform a dimensional analysis. Um, there is some assumptions that I got to stay on the front. It's going to be, we kept for both model and prototype, same temperature. That means that density and viscosity of the air would be the same. And also we kept Velocity constant. Uh, we started by using the Reynolds number, considering the Reynolds number, which is the ratio of inertia to viscous force. And as you can see here, keeping that assumptions, this brought us to a dead end because we cannot relate uh, based our analysis on diameters more than prototype. Therefore, we move on to consider the Mach number. It's a logger speed of the sound ratio of the velocity of an object moving through a fluid to a logger speed of the sound. This was kept constant due to temperature constants. Therefore, we got a linear relationship between velocity of the model and velocity of the prototype. That gave us the opportunity to estimate the angular velocity of the prototype, and that's the result that I'm going to present to you in the next slide. On the left side, you see experimental test angular velocity of the models. On the right side, you see an estimation based on dimensional analysis of the prototype. And you can see here, the main reason we did this was to find, to estimate, as a good engineers, what will happen with the power and torque so move on to select a generator and explain the electrical setups. I'm going to take care of it. Thank you. Uh, well, with the power and torque available already, we could uh, somehow design how we wanted to connect this out from the electrical point of view. And we have three different choices. The first choice at the, at the top, you can see that the turbine is connected to a DC generator. And the one here is connected to a battery bank. That would be ideal if we have intermittent wind. So every time the wind comes, we, we have the advantage to take all that energy and store it in the batteries and eventually connect it to the house. Also, if we have small wings, but we have a steady, then we can connect that DC generator directly to NEC converter and directly to the grid. Now, if we have abundant wind speeds, then we can use this setup. 
in which we are using a dual meter that we can get from any of the electric companies. Now these dual meters, what they do is they allow current to flow in both directions. So in the case that we have more electricity than we are consuming, we can sell basically that electricity back to the grid. And uh, of course, finally, this uh, one final uh, last analysis is about cost, and we divided it into three. Uh, the first is about the first, the very first one you can see it right there. Uh, that's the model we used to basically prove this concept at the beginning of the project, and all the parts together came up to about $140. Uh, secondly, we uh, have a cost analysis for all the experimental parts and equipment, including the uh, uh, 3D uh, printer that we acquired, and uh, all the parts together come up to about $2,200. And finally, we wanted to make a very uh, rough est estimate of how much the actual prototype could cost. And between parts and labor, uh, it came up to about uh, $2,500. So now with all that being said, I give you Joel, who will present our conclusions for this project. Thank you, Marcus. So in conclusion, we were able to design or predict what's going to happen with a design of a device that with uh, turbine that would mitigate wind. It will generate electric power at different wind velocities and is able to reduce the uplift effect in almost an 80% based on the result that we obtained from the simulations and experiment. So we were able to correlate our data all through, through our design study and we are proposing a three-blade twisted savonio for further analysis investigation. There are a lot of design variables that still need to be taken into account and we have a list of recommendations though possible topics for further studies, for example changing the angle to the shape of the turbine, trying to analyze, trying to do the 3D simulations instead of a 2D simulation to better correlate the results, thinking on biphasic fuel, uh, flow in order to accomplish for the rain that would come with the, with the uh, air velocity during a hurricane, and, and then uh, how to better retrofit that device into houses. Uh, in order to conclude the presentation, I will give the word. Uh, we cannot uh, finish our presentation before we say thank you to our advisors and the industry reminder, PhD student Javier Palencia. Uh, special thanks to uh, PE Pelayo Calante, which, which was our uh, sponsor. Special thanks to Professor Cigarelli in the lab, Dr. Igor Suganov, Dr. Sikin, uh, Ms. Rocio Hernandez, been very, very good uh, helping us with everything. Uh, student Paola Davalos and Sergio Baltonado, thank you very much for your help mm -hmm. throughout this process. And also Omar Tavares. Thank you very much. Uh, this concludes our presentation. Thank you for your time. We're open for questions right now. Very good. Very good timing. So uh, stay on top of that. Um, uh, Dr. Basil? Uh, sure. So I think you guys did a really nice job. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. very appreciative of the fact that you actually did predictions and validations. I think we have a big problem with that. Time. And so it was very nice to see. Um, I would just say a couple things that might help. Uh, if you go back to some of the graphs that you have yeah. with the actual homes and things that, uh, where you're showing like the, uh, yeah, something? yeah, so something like this, right? Yeah. Um, it's always great to have graphs and things like that, right? But it might be worth superimposing this on just an object that looks like a house, you know? So make the background invisible and then put the house there so that we see like, okay, this is where the pressure pro profile is over the home. Because sometimes it's just hard to get it uh, visual in your head of this, especially on some of the stuff. If you go backward, you know. And, and like that's before you leave yeah, that, yeah. I, I I have a related point. I know I'm going to have an opportunity, yeah. but this is a nice segue. You have exclusively SI units. So we're going to have an yeah. audience here that are Americans, so you may want to do some conversion right there and then where you have the SI Absolutely. units to give the USA units as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, all right, go ahead. Sure, and then the other, I guess, associated with that is, um, so you did all of this at 10 meters per second, right? All the, oh, I'm sorry, but yeah. No. All the data, yeah, as Junior was saying, uh -huh. all, the, all the, the information that we put into the, the presentation is at 10 meters per second. Uh -huh. We also run a full study at 8 meters per second, okay. and we run, uh, in the case of the three three blades of onions, we also run it at for three, four, five, six, seven, at okay. So you did, meter you, per you did investigate the influence of yeah. The you slot. saw on the report. Yeah. So I mean, yes. I understand there's only a specific amount of time that you have, but you yeah. know, it might be worth just showing one one of those, right? So you said you did one at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yes. ten. Yes. So just maybe make a slide with that, yeah. just so you can say, hey, this is the influence. 
This is not just this speed, it's all speeds. No, we might have yes. okay. Thank you. Oh, we did. And then the other <laughs> thing is what 10 meters per second corresponds to, forgive me, what, um, like miles per hour? What we are speed? talking about almost 30 miles per hour. 30 miles per hour. Yeah. Okay, so. You, you're so, it's certainly a nice analysis and everything like that, but if you're saying you're mitigating hurricanes, yes. hurricane winds, of yes. course. But the, 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 I know. We, we, we were limiting like the wind tunnel. Yeah. 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 Of course, of course. But just mention. Oh, yeah. You don't necessarily have to mention that, but it does help when you're defining things, you know, to yeah. say, look, this is a qualitative study that we're trying to propose. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 10 meters per second, that's what, 32, that about 32, 32 feet yeah. per yeah. second. 32 feet per second is less than 30 miles an hour. Wow. It's 60, uh, 30 miles an hour is 44 feet per second. Yeah, well, okay. So, so you're talking about 25, 25, 25 miles per hour. Yeah. Miles per hour. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, is that? Go for it, yeah. 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 All right. Um, you guys were coming over pointing things out. Uh, you have, do have a laser pointer. Be professional and use a laser pointer. Okay. And, uh, and you can stand back where you are rather than getting in front of the screen. Yes. And, uh, and then you could use a laser pointer to traverse the graphs and all of that. So get into the habit of Thank doing you. that. Uh, the other thing is uh, we spoke about conversion units. Uh, go to your sensitivity study graph. Uh, yes. I have an issue there. Huh? No, yeah, uh, the minutes. one uh, yeah, go forward, mesh. that one. Yeah. Well, what's that right column there? Yeah, the right column is on the graph. On the graph. Oh, on the graph. This is all the prototype that we test. Well, could you uh, either use colored or bold those fonts so we so you can see? Yes, yeah, so you can see that. Yes. Yeah, let's say just in general. Maybe just think a little bit about you know. Yeah. It came through after a while what you're plotting there, but. Just over time, it, it takes some time to figure out what you're plotting a lot of times. And so maybe just take a quick second or even do one at a time, right? So do the original house profile quickly and then say, look, this is just one different blade separately, right? So that you see, okay, two differences right here, and then you can fill in the rest of the plot, okay. right? Okay. So uh, just step us through it so that way, because when you look at this, it takes a, okay, wait, which one's the blue one? Oh, okay, I see, you know, and, and right. so As a matter of fact, uh, another yeah. way to deal with that, I don't know if you can do it, would be to to automate the PowerPoint so yeah. that you're having each graph related to a particular situation. They just sequence through very rapidly and uh, give you the opportunity to freeze it if, if someone comes up with a question. I think PowerPoint will allow you to do that. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. I don't know if you need it. Yeah, I mean, I, that's a good idea, but I don't even know if you need to time it. Just have the person hit next, next, next for yes. a couple of these, too. Yeah, yeah okay. right. Yeah, 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 that's pretty. And then that way you don't have to worry about, yeah. oh, this came up. Wait, no, go back or whatever. You know, just that's fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but in general, with those slides, uh, make the information that you have in text form a little bolder or, yeah, or yeah, yeah. use a color that will emphasize it so okay. that it becomes a little clearer. All right. And, and what Dr. Basil said about superimposing those graphs over the house Absolutely. is a great idea. Yeah. And then if you can sequence it so that you can, you can uh, desegregate, if you will, mm -hmm. the, uh, the graphs uh, from different instances, that would be great. Okay. Um, other than that, you guys are doing good, and, uh, and that's it. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thank you.